segueing into spring camp, obviously, it's going to be the third one. Well, second one, technically, for Mike Norvell, obviously his third season. What can we expect or what do you think we will expect from this that's different from what we saw in 2021? Obviously, yes, Florida State finished with a better record last season, five and seven, came within a you know, few points of possibly being bowl eligible. Mm-hmm. What can we expect, though, that will be different from what we've seen last year? Coach Storms talked about it. He was answering some questions after the workout and said that these guys now, you know, this is a wake up call for a lot of the players, definitely the transfers that come in and have these workouts. I was told from a source that a transfer came in, said, you know, the only thing that we did was 16 uh, 110 sprints, Mm -hmm. and that was once a week in January, and that was a wrap for them. Coach Storms is doing this Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Mm -hmm. and you're doing multiple things in a day, not just one thing. You're either doing sprints, you're doing agility work, and then you're also going to the weight room and working on conditioning. Then you're going out to the field and doing speed. Like this is this is a whole wake up call, definitely for guys that uh, transfer, like Micah Pittman, Jolene Wilson, even Greedy Vance, some guys that you know didn't have this kind of conditioning before in this workout process it's it's sometimes aggravating for them once they first arrive but you see them start to click and definitely the last couple of weeks a lot of these guys that transferred really transitioning well and and to it even jared verse who got to see him in person too which was extremely impressive speed fast and he's also put on some size you got to see some other defensive ends behind him that we never even really saw last year patrick payton uh, Sean Bray Jackson, two guys that are hopefully going to jump into the fold of being depth pieces this upcoming uh, season, mm-hmm. have put on some pounds. It seems to be to me that they're doing kind of a bulking stage right now. There's going to have to be some cutting involved because they were just playing a little bit more slower, but that's expected. Mm-hmm. I think they're definitely – Coach Storms is putting them – putting some size on them, and that's the game plan right now. But uh, there's a there's a lot of things, too, that this team still is developing on getting bigger. And the one thing I noticed out of probably everything, I thought the defensive tackles group looked the best out mm-hmm. of everyone. And some of the guys that, you know, we can't name names weren't able to participate. But for a majority of the guys, it was extremely impressive. The size. This is this is this is where we're starting to see the change there on the offensive defensive side. I know, Mark, you talk about it all the time too. And you cover the sec a lot along with these other big programs is Mm -hmm. when you're watching on TV and you see these offensive linemen, these defensive linemen, and they're gigantic. They're, they're some big boys. This is what Atkins is bringing into the program. And the funny thing is there's still three more to come and, and the Tallahassee once summer begins, but that was a big time. Like, Oh, okay. I see what coach storms is doing. I see what coach Atkins is doing in the recruiting room, bringing in some, some guys that like to hit that are physical and already built, you know, they're not really projects that you have to work on and add on another 30, 40 pounds almost. So, um, you know, I feel like for the last couple of years, Jason, they've been recruiting guys like Jalen Goss uh, mm-hmm. and some others who have the hype and they've got size, but it, t- it almost takes two years to develop their bodies. I think what Atkins is doing in storms, these guys are showing up with some good size, still some things to work on. Definitely Kanaya Charlton got to trim down on his side, mm-hmm. which he did. He, I thought he trimmed down a good amount uh, of weight. This, the O line, D line, that those two groups, if you're talking about size and changing there, that's, those are the, that, there's a big difference happening. And, and Logan is exactly right when he says, talking about you get these guys come in and I like Marcus said, guys from big programs. Look at last year. You know, you have Jermaine Johnson was a transfer from Georgia. Keir Thomas was a transfer from from South Carolina on the offensive line. Dylan Gibbons was a transfer from Notre Dame. You know, you got the offensive line transfer coming in from Wisconsin. You got all, all the wide receivers. You got Michael Pittman coming in from Oregon. Wide receiver transfers coming in from West Virginia, Arizona State. You know, big power five schools. So, you know, I will give Norvell credit. I will give, you know, Coach Atkins credit that they're going out and getting transfers who know what it's like to have to play big boy football. And so I think that's a good thing to help. I guess my one concern, you know, being the, the eternal pessimist, I guess, at this point, is are they are they blowing themselves up right now, setting themselves up for a, a, a downward slide during the spring? I don't think it's going to be that way, as we'll talk a little bit on later on the show about the quarterback situation. But that that is my one concern, is I don't want them to go through, have these great tour of duties, and then come out in the spring and just play tired. That, that's my concern right now for this team. 